Are you ready to clean up your photos? Well, today we'll learn how to remove almost anything in Affinity Photo. So let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download this image from the link in the video description. Now, in this video, I'll show you three different techniques for removing distractions from your photos. We'll start off with removing simple distractions and then move on to trickier areas so that you'll know how to solve common problems that you might run into. Let's start off by using the InPainting tool. Now first I'm going to add a new pixel layer so that we can draw on top of that. Then I'll select the in painting brush, which you can find over here. Just click on the little grey triangle, and then you can go down and select the in painting brush tool. To use this tool properly, I'm going to come up to the context toolbar and change this option from current layer. The current layer and below. This way, Affinity will use the information from the main layer to fill in where we paint. So let's start by painting the letters on the shirt. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to paint one letter at a time to remove these letters. Now you can see that that did a pretty nice job, but we have a couple of wrinkles that I don't like. If this happens, feel free to paint over an area more than one time to get the look that you want. The reason why I'm painting one letter at a time is to slowly remove each letter. If you paint too large of an area, it will bring in information from the surrounding area like the pants or the arm, and it won't fill in the area properly, so just take your time and paint each individual letter. Now that I've finished painting, I can see that this area and this edge by the leg doesn't look very good. Let's use the clone brush to fix this. I'll grab the clone brush tool, which is over there. Let's make sure. There's the clone brush tool. And just like with the in painting brush, I'll come up to the top and change the layer so it's current layer and below. Same as previously. To use the clone brush, I'm going to hold down the option key. And when these crosshairs come up, I'll click on an area to sample it. And then all I need to do is paint. Now I've got that held down and there's our key there and the option key is that one there. You've got to be fairly quick. Okay, the option key is held down and I've got the settings at 40 pixels, 50% and 30%. You don't, want it, you don't want it too strong, otherwise when you try and paint it will look really awful. Now I'm... Um, I'm going to enlarge that a little bit so I can see what I'm doing more easily. 
Now I'll select an area pretty close to where I'm going to paint. And you hold it down until it clicks like that and you can see the crosshair. Now turn off the option key. And you can see I'm just carefully painting that out there. If you have that, if you have those settings on the left hand side in the context toolbar set too high, 100%, it blobs on masses of paint and you can't control it. So I've only got it very light and it's about the same colour. Now what I'm also going to remind you of when you set that crosshair for the clone brush don't set it too close to another color like the white leg or it'll grab that too anything within that circle it will grab now you can see that we're repeating the area that i grabbed and placing it around the leg as I do this, I like to have my clone brush set to a nice low flow so that the areas blend together nicely. So now that I've brought that light area up, I want to bring some of the darker areas down. So I'll hold down Alt or Option to sample a new darker area. Now in this case, you've got to grab it before it goes away. Now I want to sample a darker area. There's a darker area just there. Just move that crosshair up so it's got that sampled. Then turn that off. And then with a larger brush, I'm just going to lightly tap to bring down some of that darkness. Let's enlarge the brush. Oh, that's way too big. There's it. There's a bit better. Okay. Now I'm just tapping some of those areas. You can't really see it, but it is changing the colour slightly. You can there we go. There's a darker area that's being lightened up slightly. Now let's pre repeat this process by cleaning up over there by the knee. I'll select some of the red shirt and then I can begin painting right here, right close to the leg to clean up that extra bit of the letters that we're showing. Well, we just did that. So I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. But it's referring to Let's reduce that a little bit. We want to sample that area there. Hold it down till it clicks. Turn that off. Release the option key. Now we can go around. You can see over there where I'm just lightening up oh, a little bit over the edge. Never mind. We can always fix that if we wish to. Where I'm lightening up that area there. Now I could also sample from the other direction, bringing some of the white from the pant leg and just filling in so that this knee looks nice and round. Okay, let's do that. We'll sample there. See the crosshair come up nice and clear. Turn off the option key. And bring that around there. Oops, we don't want that backspace there. Okay, now that looks pretty good, but I do still see a little bit of smudginess there. You can now see the before and after of removing those letters. Let's look at that. Bring that over there. Go back up to the move tool so I don't accidentally change anything. There we go. Now, there's only one layer we're dealing with, and there it is. Ta-da! There's the after. There's the before. 
there's the after. Too nice. This looks pretty good, but I do still, as I say, see a little bit of smudginess there, so I can use my clone brush to clean up those areas as well. So I'll sample an area that has more texture, then I'll go ahead and paint some of that texture in. If you ever mess up, and feel free to press Command or Control Z, well, in this case, on the iPad, undo the keys. You can tell that this is a this is a, a, a tutorial for the desktop as well. Feel free to adjust the flow of your paintbrush as you go to get even more light blending. At this point, I think this looks pretty good. Let me expand that there, pinch that in. There we go. That looks pretty good. The knee is nice and smooth. The letters are gone. So that's the first technique using the in-painting brush and using the clone brush to fix any areas that you might have missed. The next thing we'll do is a trickier example using only the clone brush. To start I'm going to add another new pixel layer. Add a new pixel layer. Then I'm going to come down to here to where we have some paint on the street. Let's move that up so we can see it clearly. I want to use the clone brush on the yellow paint. This area is very large and I don't think that the in-painting brush would do a very good job. Not only is this area too large, but we also have a shadow in this area that's coming from the street into the yellow paint. I'd like to have a bit more control as I remove the paint in that area, so I think the clone brush will be perfect for this. So I'll set it up again and I'll sample some of the dark shadow area on the road. Okay, clone brush. Let's make sure it's the clone brush and not something else. Now I'll just set that there. There's that. Now I want to sample that area there. There we go. Turn that off. Go ahead and paint and fill in some of this asphalt over the yellow paint. Let's enlarge that so we can see clearly what we're doing. Now you can see I've got the brush way too small, so let's go and enlarge the brush. Don't rush this and don't put too much fill in your, in your brush at the same time. We're coming in from the edge there. And we're filling in that bit up there. Notice we're on that layer. We've got current layer and below set. Turn that off. Now, do that. Select the option key. Now we've got that set. Take that off. Don't do it all one big splodge of colour in there because the road surface is quite um, mixed colours. So there you go. You can see that the clone brush is setting that colour nicely there. I haven't got the flow too high. Now it's a bit darker under there. We probably could have made that. You can see where that's going around the edge there. We'll fix that in a moment.
Okay. Let's take the sample area a bit bigger. We don't want the sand shoe in. That's not too bad just there. And we paint in from that side now. And you can see that the the um, the patch that I took must have had some of the yellow in it. So let's go over here a little bit. Now we can paint that back in. You've got to be quite careful with sampling the colour that you don't sample something else other than what you want to sample. And it's very dependent on which direction you brush your brush in. Now that's gone across there but you can see it doesn't go quite right up to the edge and we've painted over the white bit but we're going to change that shortly There we go, sampled right up to the edge and it takes that in there. Now that's not looking too bad. So I've just sampled from both sides and brought it in. I'll do the same on the other side. Sampling an area, let me just over there, and bringing it in. By collapsing multiple sample points, you'll be able to blend the different colours and textures together. To make this look a lot more natural, as you get close to the edge, you'll start to see areas that look like this down here. So that would be a good time to sample another sample point from the light area that's not in the shadow. I'll go ahead and sample a light area of the asphalt and paint that over. So back on there, we've got that same as it was there. Oops. Sample the light area. No odd bits in there. You've got to be careful with that. Now we've got that light area. Let's do that. And put a more natural edge on that shadow. There we go. That's much better. There's the girl's shadow now on the asphalt. And it's a much lighter shadow. Now, it's, of course, it's hard to see where to paint the light asphalt. To fix this, I'm going to have to use the eraser tool and I'm going to make my eraser larger. So there's the eraser tool. Now you can see that I've erased that and that's where the shadow was you see because the asphalt is just there. No problem. 
Now I can clearly see the edge of the, uh, the shadow. So coming back to my clone brush, clone brush, just make sure I've got it. Tap that and tap that. And sample the light area of the road again and continue to drag this over. Turn that off. What do you think? Have we got that? As you're painting, be sure to try to avoid areas of repetition if you notice them. This is looking really good. Let's have a look. There's the after. There's the before. Now, what we, what we have done, you can see the shadow there is over the yellow. Now, we don't want the yellow line there, but we do want the white asphalt or the, or the lighter asphalt. And have we got it? Mm, not quite. You can see the, we're on the edge of the shadow. We're on the edge of the shadow just there, but let's put that back in, and it's looking a bit clunky, really. So let's bring that down. Put that back on. I'm going to use the eraser brush to find the edge of the shadow, and there it is. See that? Now that we've got that there, what we need to do is go back to the clone brush, tap that, tap that. Make sure we've got the clone brush, tap that, tap that. Now, we want to darken, we want to get that shadow back. So hold that down, we've got some shadow, turn that off. And now we can paint that sample back in there. Smudge that across there like that. The width. Let's smooth that off a little bit so it doesn't look quite so daggy. Bring the accumulation down, get rid of those strange bumps there. Gently paint that in. And we've got a much smoother edge there now. Okay. You can see the edge of the shadow is about uh, on line with that. Yeah. That's much higher up, isn't it? Erase a brush. Take that up there. Erase a brush.
Now there's not much paint coming off the brush at all at the moment, so that's just putting that in nicely. There we go, smoothed out those edges fairly well. There we go. Now without labouring over this, and you can take your time with this, but this, we don't want this to go on and on, do we? But I think that looks really nice. Now, I want to show you, let me go up there so I don't accidentally touch it and make some mistakes. Bring that down there and bring that there. Now, we're going to have a look at this area here. I want to show you one more technique that you can use with these tools. And this time we'll use the clone brush in a different way to remove this necklace. Let's see how much of the necklace we can remove first by just using the in painting brush. Now I'll go ahead and grab that and then use a small brush and I'll go and paint over the necklace. There's the in painting brush. Seventy-eight, maybe. Let's make that sixty. Current layer and below. Now you can see I'm only doing this mm, not terribly carefully because I don't want to spend all day doing this although I would normally take a lot longer to do this than what you're seeing here. But what I want to show you is now you can still see the lines there but you can use the in-painting brush to get rid of those. Now I may have inadvertently used that layer so let's go back to that layer and there we go. Now, we have a bit of a bump going on right here. That area there. I'll add a new pixel layer and then I'll grab the clone brush tool. Let's add the new pixel layer. Then I'll grab the clone brush tool and using the clone brush tool, I'm going to sample a bit of the collar that we have. Clone brush tool. Now I need to set it to about 600 pixels. Because we need quite a large area, but not so large that it's off the scale. Let's sample a bit of the collar, just about there I think. You can see that there. Now let's see how this fits. 
let's just plonk it down there. Did I get it? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, I because I selected current layer. Oh, gee, you have to be careful of that. Select current layer. Do that. Do that. There we go. We've got the collar. Do that. Now I should be able to paint that there. And you can see how big that piece is now. Now that I selected it correctly. Now we've got to move that into position. Now I'm going to move, use the move tool to move that layer that we just painted. I'll rotate it and then place it over the area that we want to fix. So I'll just rotate that there. Now it is looking slightly like I might have to do that again, but we don't want to do that. To make this blend in even better, I'm going to have this layer selected and then I'm going to use the mesh warp tool. Now we have the collar in place. I'm going to straighten the edges of the collar. You can see they don't quite join up. Just do it there and there. The other side looks okay and how we're going to do this is go to the filters studio over there and look for the mesh warp which is LM fortunately they're all in order go down to the mesh warp and click that and you can see that's nicely in shape there and it's highlighted the part that we want to use now the simplest part of this is to just nudge that down a little bit you can see that collars on the bottom edge I'm looking at here the top edge now there's a there's quite a distinct join there It's not looking too bad, although the left hand side, now I probably could have taken a slightly better um, copy of that. And you can see the mesh line there is slightly distorted. Let's see what I grab down the other end now. That's got that bit there. So the bottom edge of that is looking very good. Now let's just tap that. That's not too bad in there. Now what I want to do though is use the in painting brush to clear that bit then the clone brush again tap that tap that Now we don't want a very big width at all there, so what we want here is that bit. Tap that off there. Tap that off there. Now we can just Paint that little bit of the collar in there. There we go, that doesn't look too bad at all. Just paint out that join there. That's good. Back over there. Mm, needs a little bit more work, but as I said, that's certainly cleaned it up. There we go. Now, all right, I think that looks pretty good. Everything's applied. Now we've added the area, but it has a little bit of extra that we don't need. 
Um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I think I'll leave that. As we've looked at the before and after. And everything's looking good. So, I think that's about it. Let's go to the hand there. We'll reduce that. Now you can see at that level, when it's expanded a lot, of course, you can see the imperfections. But down at that level, that's pretty good. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Inspiration tutorial.